This is a 26-31-34A Coco 2. I am attempting to recreate this motherboard. Now the schematic for this Coco is available online um, and I've used it uh, to recreate the schematic in KiCad. <clears throat> I did find that there are errors in the schematic, like pretty serious errors um, that don't which I confirmed, you know, were wrong by actually um, buzzing things out on this board here. Now, um, I've uh, I've had like very, very, very uh, busy several weeks and weekends, and uh, but finally this weekend I had some time, you know, to work on the, on this a little bit, and uh, I did, you know, do quite a bit. And so just to show you a little bit, I think I have the layout finally right. And so that's a one-to-one -one printout of what I have so far. I've laid out on a piece of cardboard. I want to show that uh, the mounting holes line up. Okay. Uh, all the components are roughly, you know, within a millimeter or so where they need to be. And the ones that uh, I focused on are the ones that um, you need to access outside of the case. And that, of course, is the reset switch. Uh, the I.O. ports here, <clears throat> the DIN connectors, uh, the channel select switch, the RF can, and the power switch. Um, let's put the keyboard on so that you can see that. Okay. Mylar cable here lines up with where the connector will go. It's hard to see. There it is. Okay. I'll put the case on and show you. How things come out of it. All right. Back here we can see. Here is where the reset switch is going to go. Just a paper cutout, but the position is correct. I can see the mounting holes for the DIN connectors. Here is the channel select switch, and here you see the RF out, okay? And here, of course, you see the power switch. Pretty happy so far with what I have. Um, I'm still hand routing uh, a lot of this, and I'll show you how it is that I'm hand routing this. Um, I'm going to hand route some more, and then I'll, I'll do some auto routing. Um, but so far, things are going to come out are going to come out good. I think. I hope. Now, when I'm, once I'm done with this, my next project um, will be to do the same thing uh, with the uh, 2631-34B, which is the T1 board, well, one with the T1 chip. <clears throat> and I have one here that I'm going to use as a reference. Now, this one was uh, lent to me by Mr. Dave. Um, he sent it over to me so that I can do this. Now, there isn't a schematic for that board, at least not one that I could find. Uh, the closest thing that I could find is the one for this one. So my plan is, unless somebody in the comments, you know, can point me to a schematic uh, for the other the other board, my plan is to then um, use this design once it's working as a reference to try and recreate a schematic for uh, the 3134B board. Because as far as I know, uh, there isn't one out there, or at least one that isn't easy to find. If somebody does know where that is, please include it in the comments because I want to do the same thing with that board. Um, let me show you a little bit of what I have so far in terms of a PCB layout. So here is a picture of the bottom of the 26-3134 B board. And what I did to get this was just lay the board on my flatbed scanner and scan. Okay, and so I got a pretty good high quality picture. And the reason I did this is so that I can import this into KiCad and use it as a reference to lay out the components. Once I had it scanned in, I, I trimmed it and flipped it and here it is.
Okay, it's the same board. I just flipped it. I cleaned up, um, you know, some spots, and um, flipped it. Obviously, now what then I attempted to do after that was size it, scale it right, um, so that it fit. Um, I can import it as a footprint, and um, I could have the components laid out, um, you know, where they need to be as close as possible to what their actual distances from each other are. Once I had this, and then I, what I did was I opened it up in uh, KiCad, I'm sorry, in uh, Color Paint or Color Paint, and then I cleaned it up some more. Uh, I added, you know, the coloring here. I replaced um, all the, you know, the high, high color areas with like solid single colors to help in the importing process. And so this is a single color instead of, you know, four shades of green or whatever. I went ahead and I also, I traced over some of the traces um, with red, um, the blank areas or the spaces in between, you know, the, the green part of the board, I made it this blue. And then the copper fills, um, you know, I made red. And um, obviously I, I highlighted <clears throat> by adding, you know, circles and ovals. Uh, where all the pin positions are and all the vias and all that sort of stuff. I really wanted to exaggerate it and uh, make sure there was a clear distinction in color uh, between, you know, two adjacent uh, parts of the board so that you wouldn't lose a lot of information when this image was imported into KiCad. If you want to see how I edited this, um, you know, I like using uh, KiCad. I'm sorry, uh, Color Paint because I'm just used to it. I learned how to do this with, you know, MS Paint years and years ago, and this is a pretty good clone, so that's what I use. You know, I can do all sorts of, you know, crazy things here, stuff like that, you know. Real easy sort of stuff. I won't save it, but that's what I did. Um, I then opened it up in uh, KiCad. I imported it uh, using uh, this little tool here you know, to import bitmaps. And I imported it as a footprint. So first I'll show you the schematic, what I have. And uh, it's similar to the schematics that I had already uh, for the Coco 2. Um, in fact, I used it as a basis because they're pretty much wired the same way. Uh, I cleaned it up some, and of course I renamed, you know, all the references, all the labels for all the components to for them to correspond to what's on the schematic for this one. This is the peripheral sheet where you have, obviously, uh, the DIN connectors, the salt chip, uh, the PIAs, keyboard connector, and uh, the DAC chip. Over here is the PCB layout. I drew the edges here based on measurements I made, and then, um, the image that I showed you earlier, <clears throat> I imported as a, as one of these Eco One user uh, layer, and you see I brought it in, and most of it, the parts that I cleaned up, uh, came in, and it was very helpful. Since I flipped it, you know, uh, I was able to lay it right on top of of this, and it was a, a, an excellent guide to help me place these components. Now, I wish I had the top, um, which I might do something, because I'm, I'm also using it to confirm connections, and it has helped quite a bit. I can just follow the traces. And also, and I'll, na I'll enable uh, the bottom copper layer here, you'll see that I have been tracing, you know, over them. So I will recreate as best I can uh, the existing traces at least on the bottom of the board. Let me get rid of uh, the eco layer here. You can see this is what I have so far. Not too bad. Give you an idea of what it's going to look like. I will render it. 
and it takes a little bit. I have a slow computer, but it will show up. And there it is. Not too shabby. Well, that's my update so far on this project. I hope to have most of it, if not all, completely finished by the end of the month and hopefully ordered um, so that I can start assembling it and testing it. This is one of the Cocos I really, really, really want to make. Um, it has the single ROM chip and it has this nice port to, you know, use, um, you know, memory boards or whatever on here. I really like this one. Yep. Well, there you go. And 